try recipes for one or two coming right up. There's mm. a out of five. Last month, when my older kids helped me do recipes for one or two people, I asked you, do you want to see more of these types of videos? Yes, yes. Yes, please. Yes, please. More, more. Well, here you go. And just to show you that I'm doing recipes for two, I'm going to be using the four quart Kasori light today. It comes in three different colors. I'm using the white because I gave the other two colors away. Are you ready for some air fryer meals for one or two? Let's go. Now, I introduced you to Haley in my last video. She's away at college and I asked her what she thought I should make and she told me all about these delicious cheeseburger crunch wraps and I thought I'd let her tell you why she thought you need to see this one. Hey guys, I am so excited for you to try this recipe for a couple of reasons. One, the hamburger patties are so easy to make and they taste amazing. Two, it's customizable. You can easily switch out ingredients, your toppings with ones you love. And number three, who knew that a tortilla would taste so good with a cheeseburger? It's crunchy, it's delicious, and it's easy. You are gonna love this one. And for this one, we just need a burrito-sized flour tortilla, a half pound of ground beef. This is like one and a quarter pound, so I'm gonna set this aside and use it very last. Then here's the spices I need. Now when I'm dealing with raw meat, I usually like to get everything ready first. Like this is two tablespoons of just some plain breadcrumbs or panko. I just wanna get it all together first because my hands are gonna get messy with the beef. So I've got a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. Well, of course it also helps with filming, but it's gonna help you in the kitchen too. That's onion powder, same measurement, and then just a dash of pepper. This is all gonna be mixed up in my ground beef mixture. And in this measuring cup, I'm just gonna throw in a half tablespoon of milk and a half tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And now I've got all of this ready to go. And because I'm gonna cook up my hamburger patties a little bit first, and then use it again, I'll just clean up, I'm just gonna put a little bit of foil here at the bottom. The purpose of this is to catch all my grease drippings from these hamburgers. Then I'm gonna put my tray right on top. Now I'm gonna weigh out a half pound of ground beef, which is about eight ounces. Of course, if you're just buying your meat in a half pound increment, then you don't really have to do that. So here's my milk and Worcestershire sauce and all of my seasonings. And I'm gonna just mix this up. Now you could do this with a frozen hamburger patty and just sprinkle on like some hamburger seasoning. You could do it as advanced or as simple as you want. We're basically just wanting to make two hamburger patties. Then just make up your two little hamburger patties. Flatten those out. Then we're gonna pop this in the air fryer and put it up to 380 or 170 Celsius. And we're gonna run it for about, I'm gonna do about seven minutes. I'm gonna turn my shake reminder, check those and flip them. Here's our shake reminder. That looks really nice, really perfect, and it smells really good too. Let me give those a quick little flip. I can just see there's still some pink in there. I'm not even gonna really take the temperature yet. Pop that back in, and it will just automatically start. I love that. All right. I'm certain these hamburger patties are done and we'll just be sure here. Internal temp is hitting about 145, which is fine because we're gonna cook these a little bit more. So I'm gonna just set these aside. Then I'm just gonna use a paper towel here to grab those little insets and carefully lift out the foil and just use my paper towel to wipe out the inside of that. There's just a little bit of residue. Then I'm just wiping up the rest of the greasiness off here with the paper towel. Now you're gonna wanna have your top Things all handy, ready to go. I'm just doing this and I've got some diced onions I'm gonna throw on mine. I didn't have pickles, sadly enough, so I'm just gonna have to go with this. Lay your hamburger right here in the center of the burrito and top it with some cheese and throw on whatever toppings you want. I've got some garden fresh tomatoes from my dad. And then I just add some romaine lettuce. So not the traditional hamburger lettuce, but that's okay. Okay, now comes the slightly tricky part. We're gonna just fold this up into like a pinwheel, if you could imagine. This is becoming our cheeseburger crunch wrap. Now, if you wanted crunch crunch, you could throw tortilla chips in here. I'm going a little healthier. The beautiful thing is you could do like whole wheat, you could do low carb, anything you want to help this be a little healthier. And you can see, there we go, my little cute little crunch wrap. Now for the ultimate crunch, I do wanna just lightly spray this with oil. You could put it directly on the food or you could like spray the inside of your basket. 
I'm just gonna kind of rub that around because I love the crunchy crispiness of this. Now see we got that folded side. And of course the toothpicks are optional, just kind of helps everything stay in there. And then you can just put that folded side right down there in the air fryer. So now we've got that greased side here at the top. It's all ready to go. And then we're just gonna pop this back into the air fryer. Bring that up to 400 Fahrenheit or 200 Celsius. By the way, the light will go all the way up to 450 if you really wanted to. I'm gonna do 400 though. And I'm gonna go for about six, five minutes and I do wanna flip it so there's my shake reminder. All right, three minutes in, looking good. I do want those a little more crunchy. That side, so I'm actually gonna crank that back up to 415. Let's try that out. After just a minute of that higher temperature, those got nice and toasty. You could use tongs to flip. I'm just going with my hands. Oh, it's hot. There we go. I'm gonna see how those last two minutes do on that one side. And then we'll see how these look. Heck, they look so good. Oh, I'm excited to try these out. See, now that it's all closed and cooked shut, you can take these toothpicks out. And I just have to cut into this one. This one's for the girls to share. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Oh, that looks so good. Oh boy. They're coming to taste test. Yeah, this is for you. What? I'm excited for this one. Okay, here we go. Mm. Wait, what's in this? It's not so good. good. Okay, tell me what you think, because I already know what I vote. Haley said we need to make this one. Mm. It's so good, it's out of the range. There's mm. a Benedict out of five. So good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've got a special link down in the video description box for this Kasori air fryer. It's the light four quart. And at the end of the video, I will link to my full review of this air fryer. This next recipe was emailed in from Steve from Las Vegas. We're calling it air fryer breakfast bagels. And this one's so cool. This is one of those super flexible recipes. All you need is a bagel. However many people you're feeding, however much bagel they would want. For each bagel, you'll want about one egg, a little bit of milk, of course, some salt and pepper, and here's where it gets flexible. I got some chopped red bell peppers, some ham, onions, and cheese. You pretty much just want to get anything together that you would put in an omelet. Now, Steve said that he presses down in the bagel because we're going to make like a well. I decided to even like get rid of some carbs in this one. I'm going to just like not so gracefully pick out some of the bread from the bagel here. Pick, squeeze, just going to make a well for the egg mixture. I'm gonna pop them right here in my little air fryer. Of course, this is optional. I just wanna toast it up a little bit. So I'm just gonna do 350 for about three minutes. And while that's running, I'll do my egg and just a half tablespoon of milk. Whisk that all up. That's nice and toasted. Now, I think it might be a little tricky for me to pour this egg mixture. It, it might be fine, but I'm just gonna put it in my little, I got this little cute OXO cup here. You'll see I've got about four tablespoons or a quarter cup. And I'm just gonna pour some of my egg mixture right in there. Oh, it's so cute. I love this idea, Steve. And more over here. Whoops, I got a little sloppy. Oh, well. And then just throw on like whatever toppings you want. I'm realizing though I've got a problem here. This one's leaking. I think that I probably poked through it, so. Rip, rip me. Oh well, I think it's still gonna be good. There we go. I decided to not put onions in just because my girls are gonna help me taste test. And we'll punch it down 350 Fahrenheit or 175 Celsius for five minutes. All right, let's take a peek. Oh, that looks lovely. Let's see how my little leakage job did there. Not too bad. Oh, I'm excited to try these out. All right. What is this? It is the toasted bagel breakfast egg thing. I forgot the name. That's good. Okay. Three? Probably a four. Hey, Steve, good job. I think this is great. I'm not usually a bagel person for breakfast, but I give this one a five. It's easy. It's an all-in-one type of breakfast. Love it. Mm, so good. Okay, the peppers are off. Now what is it? A five. Totally a five. 
totally good. All right. I want to show you how you can make meatloaf, potatoes, and your red cheese all at the same time in this small little air fryer. Now for context, I'm just using the rest of the beef that I had and it's almost one pound here. And today I'm just going to make meatloaf like my mom always used to, which was just kind of throwing a bunch of stuff in. But if you like detailed recipes, I have a super yummy one on page 45 of my cookbook. It's a yummyairfryrecipes.com. I'll also link to it below for you. But my mom would just kind of throw stuff in and that's what I'm going to do today. So I've got about a quarter cup of oatmeal. I'm going to just throw in some salt. Actually, that's pepper. And now some salt. And I've got some onion powder. And I'm just throwing in some garlic powder. And my mom would always throw an egg in there. Whoops. And then I've got some chopped onions that I have on hand. I'm gonna throw some Worcestershire sauce in. My mom wouldn't do this, but I love it, so I'm throwing it in. And then, yes, we would always throw in just a little bit of mustard and, of course, ketchup. And then, yep, we would just throw our hands in there and mush it all up. Let me know how your mom always made meatloaf. Was she like my mom, just, just kind of wing it, or was she a little more structured? Now, in my opinion, this is looking a little too wet, so I'm gonna just throw more oatmeal in there. Maybe you do breadcrumbs. My recipe in the cookbook actually used crushed saltine crackers. So this what in my works. Again, lots of options with this. If you have like silicone muffin liners, you could do individual portions in these. You could use a ramekin. If you're making a big batch, I would recommend putting them in whatever you're gonna bake them in and then freeze the rest. You can just cook up what you're gonna eat tonight. But what I'm gonna do is just get like a portion of this, about a quarter pound of this, and kind of make my own little loaf. The key to this is having it about the same thickness throughout. That way it's gonna cook nice and evenly. Then you're gonna just put this to one side of your air fryer. And I'm gonna give this a little head start. I'm gonna bring that up to 380 and cook that for about five minutes. While that's cooking, you're gonna go ahead and wash a potato, pierce it a few times with a fork, then you're gonna pop it in the microwave for about four to five minutes. And the third part of this meal is gonna be your veggie. Now, usually I will pull out some frozen broccoli and throw that in, but I have some peppers and onions. I'm gonna chop those up. The thing to consider is whatever veggie you choose, if it's more of a root type of veggie, it's gonna take longer to cook, so you would wanna throw that in right there at the beginning with the meatloaf. But for these peppers and onions, 10 minutes tops will cook these beautifully, so I'm just gonna have them ready when I throw the potato in. Okay. The meatloaf got a little bit of a head start. I'm gonna throw my potato in there. And I actually really love to add a little oil to my potato because it just makes it super moist inside. A little salt. And then this third little spot, whoops. Well, I dumped it everywhere. So that doesn't matter though. We can just throw this all over, get all my veggies in there. And I'm just gonna spray those a smidge. And anyway, if I was more graceful, they all would have landed right about here. But you know me. Okay, so that's gonna go in. Bring this up back to 380 and we'll give it about, about 12 minutes and see how that goes. Now there's always a few different factors to consider when you're cooking up beef. It's gonna depend on the thickness, so whatever container you have it in or if you have it thinner, more like a hamburger patty, that works too. The key to success is an instant read meat thermometer and knowing what temperature to cook it to. Now I have a free download that I give to all subscribers of my newsletter. It has all of the internal temperatures for ground beef. It even includes baked goods. I just have this tape to the inside my cabinet door right above the air fryer I almost always use. So if you just go to internaltemperaturechart.com, put in your email, I will email you that free download and you'll get my Sunday morning emails that come with more air fryer recipes plus any little facts and tidbits about me every Sunday morning. Oh, and silly me, I forgot to turn on that shake reminder, but it doesn't matter. I can do that whenever I want to. It'll still do the right time for me. Let's just take a quick peek here. My baked potato is coming in at 140. Ground beef, oh my goodness, it is almost done. I think I'm looking right on track. I'm gonna go ahead and just rotate my potato so that other side gets crispy. Stir up my veggies a little bit. I'll go ahead and just flip my meatloaf. Now, usually I'll make like a little ketchup brown sugar nutmeg glaze, but, and then I'll just put it here on the top at the very end. But I'm gonna skip that for today. And since I'm so close to being done, I think we can get this done in about two more minutes. And I'm gonna crank that up to 400 just so I can crisp up the other side of the potato faster. While that was cooking, I just got my little parchment paper liner here and I've made up the rest of my meat into meatballs. I'm gonna freeze that for later. The 
this is done. Let's just give it a double check here. Temperatures are looking on point. I'm gonna just let that rest for a few minutes. Leave it right there in the air fryer. And just like that, an air fryer meal for one. Okay, lots to choose from. You love potatoes, yes? Mm -hmm. Little pepper, little onion, little meatloaf, little potato. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. For me, five all the way. I give it a five. You love it? Be sure to check out my other air fryer mills for two. And if you want the Kasori Light, the four quart that fits perfectly in a smaller kitchen, I've got a link for it down in the description box below. Here's some budget friendly mills. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.